Welcome to the Property Management Mastermind Show with your host, Brad Larson. Brad owns one of the fastest growing property management companies in San Antonio, Texas. This podcast is for property managers by property managers. You'll hear from industry leading professionals on best practices, new ideas, success stories, and lessons learned. This is your opportunity to learn about the latest industry buzz surrounding property management, as well as tips and strategies to improve your business. If you are looking to enhance your tenant's movement experience, cut down on phone calls or emails to you or your staff regarding utilities, then you must connect yourself, your team, and your tenants with Citizen Home Solutions. Citizen Home Solutions takes the hassle of utilities off your hands and your tenants. Best of all, we do it for free. Build us into your tenant benefit package. Oh, and start benefiting from our revenue share program. Yes, we pay you a quarterly commission on specific services your tenant opts into. Want to know more? Give us a call today at 877-528-3824 or visit pmcpartner.com. Need a repair at 2 a.m.? Easy does it. Easy Repair coordinates maintenance and nothing else and takes after-hour maintenance calls for property managers, working with your property management software so you can see exactly what Easy is doing without leaving your own software. From Las Vegas, Nevada, our full-time maintenance coordinators will dispatch your work orders directly with your vendors. Give us a call at 800-488-6032 or visit our website, easyrepairhotlinellc.com. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Property Manager Mastermind Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Larson. Today's guest, I have the esteemed Mr. David Borden, who just came off his most recent prize-winning fight this last weekend. Congratulations on, on winning that fight, Dave. Also, we have an esteemed guest, Melissa Sharon, coming at us from Idaho. Great time to have you guys on the episode because we want to touch on, we want to address the most uh, interesting thing that's going on in the industry that has created a lot of buzz. A lot of people are curious about it. And we want to know kind of how it's working, what's going on with it. Uh, I'm in line to do this. And this is the implementation of RentVine. RentVine is a new management company software. I shouldn't say new. These guys have been around for a long time, or probably a decade or so in the management space. But they've decided several years ago to create one of the best products out there, which we all are, are starving for, is a management solution that's working for everybody that has a voice, has an ear with the management software companies uh, that can give us something that we all want. We want all want a functioning platform for property management software. So without further ado, I wanna give them a few minutes to introduce themselves. I'm going to start with District Dave. Dave, how's your arm today? You, you're, you're done being sore from your fight. How are you feeling? Yeah, I know. You're probably saying this because I look like one of the bald guys. I thought you were insulting me saying that it looks like I got beaten up because my face is so ugly, but that's that's just something you would normally say. Um, yeah, I appreciate you having us on. Um, we've, been laying, we've been laying a little low, listening to all the chatter out there and reading all the message boards. I have got on a, po a couple podcasts, obviously, and um, Brad wanted me on this to talk about RentVine, and I thought it would be best to bring a customer on because because it's never good to just hear the guy who runs the company talk about how great you are. Um, so we are, uh, we are a property management software. We do take a different approach to the way the software should work. And you know, that is that we want our software to be ultimately flexible. You would be amazed how many times we program one way and somebody else wants it the exact opposite, whether it's a tax situation or a transaction or how you handle billing or whatever it is. So we've done a lot of stuff with like settings, which allows companies to, run the business however they want to. We have some people that like to uh, charge all of their prepaids on a cash basis at the end of the year for rent and put that on the 1099s. Others don't. We can handle it either way. So we have a, instead of having a big fight in the industry about how to do it, we try to make our software work for everybody. Um, most important though, um, there's been a lot of chatter about customer support out there. That's our DNA. That's what we do best. So not only do we feel like we have the best product, we're going to support it like we, like we have our other products. So, Melissa, give us some background here on who you are, what you are with the management company, and then talk to us about how you decided to make the integration with RentVine into your system. Go ahead. Sure. So, we, um, as um, Brad said, I'm out of Boise, Idaho. We manage about 1,300 doors. We are primarily multifamily, but we do have some single family mixed in. Um, 
we've been wanting to switch softwares for god i think at least four years now and we just haven't found one that's been quite as solid in the accounting piece um, that we were pleased with a product that we wanted to provide our owners with that accounting that we've had for so long um, we knew we were inefficient on our on our software um, and finally dave said he was ready to bring on a bigger client and although the timing for me and the spring wasn't ideal. Um, I got buy-in from my team and looking back now, we just had our strategic plan and the number one best thing that we've accomplished in 2021 was switching software. So a um, lot of hard work. Um, it doesn't have to be scary, um, but it was, it single-handedly has upped our income and efficiencies in so many ways um, because we took the plunge. One of the first things we want to talk about is the objections. The objections are not necessarily going to come from your owners, right? The owners that you manage for, the third-party management people. It's really from your internal staff or even inside your own heart and your mind. Those are the objections that we want to chat on. So when you first brought this to your team, uh, you're thinking pitchforks and nooses. They're going to string you up, right? Because you're, you're disrupting their lives at that point. And a lot of our employees, their mindset, their DNA is – they love their, their warm blanket of continuity wrapped around them to include the software they've been using for years and years and years. So when you first approached them, how did you handle it and what were some of the objections and how did you get through it all? So we actually um, really pride ourselves on an innovative culture here. That's, that's part of our core values. That's what we believe in. Um, and I say that in general, we're a little bit younger staff than maybe most, but we do have some people that fight technology um, because that's just the nature of it. Um, but we, I actually didn't take too much time on a demo. I mean, I looked at it, you know, my husband looked at it, but we set up uh, special meetings with each department. And so we set up several different demos with RentVine and we said, please just talk to us about accounting because you have the accounting team in here and how things are going to be better for them. And then we did that with maintenance and with leasing. And so from the get go, we had buy-in from our management team and our staff. Um, we enabled them, or maybe empowered is a better word, to help make us help us make the decision. Um, it wasn't mine to make, or my husband's, or anyone else's. It was a team collective effort. Um, we committed together, um, and we knew it would be hard. We knew there'd be some time that we'd have to put into it. Um, but with a good plan and the buy-in, it went very smoothly. I mean, there was not. The, the pros outweighed the cons like 100%. And, and, and those were externally, I mean, internally now looking back over the course of the nine months we've been on it, um, I, I can't think of a lot of cons um, to go back on. So good decision, good reflection, but it was important that they were a part of the decision and not just us telling them this is what we were going to do. One of the cons obviously is you had to work with Dave, but beside that, how <laughs> not did true. you... <laughs> <laughs> How did the mid-year implementation go? I mean, that's that's one of the biggest, scariest things that people like just freak out and lose their mind over. Oh, we can't we can't implement mid-year. You know, we're gonna have two 1099s. How'd you handle it? So I'll be honest and say I wasn't worried about the 1099 piece. I knew we had 10 months to figure it out. And I know with the, the support that we've received and the planning that we had, um, that they were going to help us through that process. We're, we're a big operation. We have 1,300 doors. That's 1,300 tenants or, or plus that, you know, the 300 owners we have, all of our vendors, all of our account codes. Um, we just sat down and made a really good plan. There were some things we learned along the way. Um, and I, as people continue to change over to rent buying, those are things I pass on to those people that call and say, what would you have done differently? Um, and nothing on rent vans, rent buying side. It's just a matter of us not thinking through fully every process. And so now hopefully that now that I've been through it, I'm able to help those not um, have to struggle through parts of it. Um, we, we got a good plan. We did the timing right. We were heavy on communication. Um, I joke that RentVine probably doesn't like to see my phone number or my email come through. We literally were talking daily with multiple, with multiple people there. Um, but back to the commitment, we were committed. RentVine was committed and we saw each other through it. And with a good solid plan, I mean, we really had very little hiccup. So actually tell me how the 1099 is going to work just to, just to shore up this conversation on this particular piece. Right. So basically we're going to run a report. Obviously we went live April 19th. So we really just have about, you know, one quarter and a little bit, some owners a little bit after that. Um, you will run a report in your old software 
you will do a one entry for the income that happened from January one to, you know, to April 18th. And you will put that into rent vine as one entry. Um, and then it will produce one ten ninety nine. So you still, our owners will have two statements. They will have, we will run an old statement from our old software from January 1st to April 18th. And then we will run the new statements from when we went live in rent vine, but it will, but rent vine will produce one ten ninety nine. Well, there you go. Problem solved. Yeah, we just so do it. We just do a tax adjustment on our end, and yep. they only have to send it out of our system. We've already got the 1099s nailed down. We had a beta customer go live with us in October, with about 10 properties, and uh, we were ho- we were thinking we had till the final year to finish up 1099s, but we didn't. He said he needs the, he needed those properties to have 1099s. So we got all the fire filing knocked out. The 1099 goes straight into the owner portal. It literally takes seconds to do your 1099s. Um, so yeah, we got we have that we got that figured out a year early. So. So now we just now that's one less thing we have to worry about come tax season. Well, that is a big deal. I don't want to glaze over that real quick because uh, a lot of folks think that they're going to have to take one software 1099, another software 1099, take it to some sort of CPA, have them produce one 1099, or do some crazy adjustments in their in their accounting systems. It really does. It's like a freak out moment for a lot of managers to think they got to like spend a lot of effort on this. So I, I think you guys need, you nailed it, you know, with your explanation, as far as it's just a minor adjustment it's, it, inside it's, the software. It's a tax adjustment that my staff will take care of in your implementation. And then you just do 1099s out of our system, whether you switch in February or in December, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll make sure that that happens. That's pretty easy. I'm, so it, Brad, I'm so, going to throw in there too, that, to be scared to end at the end of the year just because of 1099s is silly. You're just delaying the inevitable and you're not committing to providing the best product to your clients. So it's just an ex- one more excuse of why you can't switch software. You're never going to be 100% ready. So find what works best for you, which, you know, Rentvine is that in my opinion, and then make the plunge. I mean, you'll they'll, they'll help you figure out 1099s or whatever challenge you come across. It reminds me of recruiting agents. So back mm-hmm. in a former life, I was recruiting agents a lot for trying to be realtors under our, our, our company. And there's always the next closing. I can't make the switch until the next closing. Or I got two more listings I have to get rid yeah. of and sell before I can make the switch. And you're like, there's no good time to switch. It's like, it's like moving. It's like, there's no good time. You just got to suck it up and do it. Okay. So this reminds me of another story. Of one of my favorite shows is the Shark Tank. And they <laughs> always talk about uh, we should all know this because we had Damon John speak at one of our most recent conferences. It was amazing. He, we learned a ton from that. And one of their main topics is solving the problem. So I'm going to make a point here, Dave, wake up, is that you guys are working to solve the problem. And one of the biggest problems is we all have 10 platforms, 20 platforms we're working on. And you know what I'm talking about. You have all these, uh, the, you have the, the application process, you have the lease signing process, you have your forms, you have this, you have all the different platforms. And so the Rentvine team, they've, they're striving to make this less complicated and bring everything in into one platform. Specifically, what I'm mo- really most excited about is, I mean, there's tens of other things I'm really excited about in, in working with them, but uh, is the document center. And so they just launched this and this is one solving a huge problem. And before I try to butcher that explanation, Dave, you may want to jump in and tell me what the document center is and how it works inside of Rentvine. Okay. Um, When we built Rentvine, we had people come in that were on every system. Your office came in. We had people, someone come in from Promise, someone from Rent Manager. We had people come in on different software platforms and tell us what they loved and hated. And we tried to keep, uh, we try to keep what people love and get rid of what they hate. All right. So one thing that people like is they want to, they want to work with other people. I mean, Oh, you're talking about doc center. My bad. Uh, doc center is um, everybody has to use other stuff. They have to, they have to use a bunch of other programs. Um, document center, anything that you have to get e-signed, almost every property management company has to go outside their platform to do so. Send emails, get emails back. We've built a document center. You can exactly replicate any document that you have in your office, uh, a lease, a management agreement, any addendum. You can have signature fields, initial fields. You can have tenant inputs. Um, you, it's basically a, a self-contained tech-enabled office. That's what I was trying to get at. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we kept hearing is we have to have a tech-enabled office. 
And without a document center, without the ability to get signatures quickly and easily, you don't have a tech enabled office. You have to go off into email and do attachments and send it and scan and print. That's not tech enabled. Tech enabled is you have the documents in your system. You click a button. It, it emails everyone it's supposed to. Everyone's supposed to sign. It alerts you when they've signed. It's automatically sends to the next person. That person signs. It automatically comes back to you. You sign. And then everybody has a copy of that placed in their appropriate portal automatically. That's a tech enabled office. And when you talk about the steps, the steps required to get a lease signed without that, you have to create a document on a signature platform. You have to attach that document to an email. You have to send it out. You have to get everybody signed. Then you have to get that document. You have to upload it into your system. Now, I just mentioned about 10 or 15 minutes worth of work that's going to happen in two seconds. Not only that, but if you, as long as you're using rent, uh, rent, uh, rent vine screening, it's a button. You create it, you take that approved tenant, you create a financial lease from it. And as soon as that financial lease is created, you create a, a, an actual hard e-signature lease, which ha has hot fields, rent amounts, tenant names, security deposits, property addresses, all that stuff can be hot fielded and set directly into the document center. Once you get it set up one time, just like most of our software, when there's a little bit involved in setup, and Melissa, you can talk about management fees and late fees. You set it up once in the, in the global settings, and then it's all drop downs. When you set up a new property, instead of having to enter in all of your stuff over and over again, you just hit a drop down. So same thing with the document center. You get a document that you're going to use over and over, build it one time, might take 10 or 15, 20, 30 minutes even, then it's there forever. Every time you use that process, you've just put 15 minutes of time in your bank account. And that's what Docu Document Center does. We've called it Rent Sign because we think it sounds neat. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, let us know. Um, but we think that that's a game changer. And I know I'm being long-winded here. One more point is we talked about implementation. Nobody wants to switch. I understand that if our software is 2 or 3% better, there's no reason to go up into your office and switch. So we know we have to be 20, 30, 40% better. Uh, Document Center puts us there. As far as process goes, we have everything else anybody else might have, but that process puts us significantly ahead of the pack as far as efficiency goes in your business. Personally, I think the name for that apparatus should be Rent Brad. Can we make it so? <laughs> there are significant royalties included, but yes, I think we can figure that out. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally messing with it, but this is significant, honestly, because uh, we execute roughly 450 lease agreements a year. And that is a big pain in the, you know what, because we have to go outside to DocuSign and DocuSign is essentially, obviously kind of a, lot, a lot of people know what that is. There's, there's EchoSign, which is an Adobe product. There's DocuSign, which is another version of this. But you have to create that over and over and over and over and over. You can template it a little bit, but again, you do it in outside software. You have to bring all that in to your management platform, whatever that management platform is. You name the software company out there. You still have to go to two different platforms. So now, gang, I want you to realize this is now integrated fully into the platform. And we're very excited to, you, to be able to touch and, and feel this on a soon basis because I was talking to my leasing director and I said, this is all going to be integrated in this new software. And her eyes got real big and she's like, really? Because now I don't have to go to this place and that place and the other place. And it's just all integrated in software. And so think of once you execute a lease agreement, then it goes into the, all the portals, right? And I haven't even seen this yet. I just know kind of what the concept is. Just very excited about that whole thing. So Melissa, have you seen some of this yet? So we've seen a lot of um, the stuff that it came with. Obviously, we jumped on in April. And so the document center wasn't quite there yet. Um, but wasn't I think there at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think communication in general is just smoother. It, it's a one-stop shop. You know, I'll, I'll touch on the live portal. Um, there, there's things of our fees that we collect that are actually being paid because tenants can see live what they owe. Um, it, it has increased month over month consistently um, and dramatically. Um, the document center, we are getting ready to go live. Well, obviously it just went live last week, um, but we're getting ready to implement that. And then along with the screening 
we've had access to that. We've just waited to do that till after summer. Summers are really busy time. And my staff already, um, were, you know, head over heels busy in the implementation and the transitioning. I didn't dare change their screening process. Um, so I made sure they would not quit their jobs through the summer. Um, (laughs) but we are getting ready to implement that as well. And in fact, we need to fill one more leasing spot and we're going to kind of play with in our slow time to see if, if the efficiency, um, obviously goes down when we screen through rent fine and it's literally a click of a button for data entry. I'm not so sure we're going to need to hire that other person because that's how much time it's going to be saving them. Yeah. Or you can go with a remote team member. Now we've yeah. been using their, their product rent screener, which rent screener uh, was basically absorbed into rent vine. That's a, that's an yeah. easy way to say it. No, rent screener so, is still live. We just rebuilt it within, within rent vine. So it's right. the exact same thing. We've actually added, multiple enhancements to that a lot of people on rent screener have been asking for. We added a lot of that stuff in rent vine. Um, so that's the, the rent vine product is, is a little bit superior to the rent screener product for sure. As more tenant friendly legislations are passed from reduced security deposits to no evictions in the winter months and everything in between in the future, the landlord's income will be ultimately affected and even being driven out of their rental business. Property managers and landlords need to make sure their voices are heard to help reduce the tide of these increasing laws that will ultimately make owning a rental property more difficult and costly. Let your landlords know about Shorevestor's landlord protection insurance to help them protect their rental income. Call us at 800-975-0562 or visit shorevestor.com to learn more about Shorevestor and how it can help you protect your landlord's income and grow your business. So that was a big part of talking to just my director of leasing is like, look, even the screening process is going to be fully integrated into that particular software that we're talking about. And again, it just, it just makes that job easier. So you know, Melissa, we, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, that could be a role where a remote team member takes that on, where you may not have to hire a full-time person in, in your market center, which has been challenging for everybody here. It's been, it's been tough to find good staffing um, mm-hmm. just for all of the world that we're in. I mean, I just try to go get, go get a plumber to come out to your house, right? It's just, it's just a difficult time right now. So we all know this. All right. So the, one of the things we do want to touch on is uh, the implementation and training because it's it's not just an easy like here's your manual switch it on and uh good luck with you with you guys like other softwares they're they're like yeah here's a here's a manual here's a couple videos good luck and then if you call in get in line uh if you want an upgrade uh leave it on this list over here and if 10 out of the thousand people want that upgrade they might consider it so talk to me about the implementation and training that you experienced with rent Okay. So we, um, like I talked about, I mentioned a couple of times, we created a really good plan. Um, and it took our higher level people here to create those reports. And really it was the communication between really trusting when rent vine was the expert in their product and we're the expert in the industry. And so together we had to communicate on how that was going to work going forward. So what parts were we going to allow them to do because they were expert in their product and what parts do we need to communicate and set up because we know how it functions. They're not property managers, right? We are. So there has to be a why in everything when you make this plan. I need this to be this way, um, or I need it to be entered in this way because of this. Um, and if you get to those situations where you felt you didn't communicate properly, there's were a couple on our end that was our fault. Um, they were really good about fixing. So we got the generic implementation as far as entering stuff in all handled. And then basically we worked through um, each scenario as it came up. And I think it goes back to, this is why you need your team buy-in because it can't just be the business owner or your operations manager, or whoever's running the show, the one figuring everything out. Um, You know, take me, for example, I know how to do these things in my office, but all of my employees know how to do it better than me because they do it every day. And so you have to empower them to be able to click around, to be able to not be scared to make a mistake. Um, But the customer service, when that happened, when a mistake was made or when we weren't sure how to do it um, was top notch. And I think that that speaks to the character and the professionalism of Rent Vine. Really, they're there for you. They really want to 
provide and build a good product. And if you find a hole because you're the PM and you know the system, you know the industry different than they do, um, they're willing to work to make it better for you. Um, so after the general input, and then we've we spoke quite frequently with the team <laughs> in the very beginning. Like I said, Dave's laughing because he knows. Um, these people are like my friends now. Um, and then as it's gone over time, they have a section that you can, they have directions on things. And Dave can tell me exactly what it's called. Um, they've have the help, really center. Good help center. So they're really good about when you ask a question, they step by step and they encourage you to work through it. So you know how to do it rather than relying on them to do it for you every time. Um, and that comes a little bit later in the process. Um, and then when we come up with something crazy and want them to, to build something or fix something that we like, um, those are conversations that we have and then they work on it and we test and we move forward. So we're really rolling very smoothly. Um, the implementation process, I would say about a month or so for our size, we were talking, I, I mean, almost daily, I think. Um, but the live went good. The statement, you got to go through the whole, the whole cycle that you do as a PM, you know, your owner statements, your, all that stuff. And once you get through that, it's about a month for us. Um, then you're, then you're running pretty smoothly. So talk to us, Dave, if you can wake up now. Um, hey, I just he, like, I like hearing Melissa talk about how great too. my team is. It's fun. Hey, it, it's cool stuff. So we were touching on this in the green room before the, the show started was uh, some of the integrations. Um, and that's, that's a kind of a long explanation. It's not uh, an easy answer. You know, Melissa and I were thinking, okay, one of the coolest things we could have is if uh, there's some sort of credit reporting that would go back uh, into TransUnion because we're pulling from TransUnion. I know you guys are working on this. And it's one of those things that's coming, but uh, I probably kind of butchered that a little bit. Talk to me more about some of the integrations you have and plan to have in the future. Well, one thing I like to do is make promises on podcasts so that then my dev team has to go pull all-nighters and make it happen. So the uh, the credit reporting as well as the ID verification is underway with TransUnion. Um, we know that a lot of people want that because they want to put it in benefit packages and uh, and stuff that they make money on. So that's really important to us to make sure that that happens. And that's just one example. I think you know, one thing I want, uh, integrations aside, like one thing I want to mention, like Melissa, uh, when she went live with us, I, I would, I would venture to say that Renfine is a completely different product mm -hmm. than it was six months ago, just because we, I mean, our release notes are pages and pages and pages, which is the same as most companies yearly releases, uh, result, uh, release notes. And we do it every two weeks. Um, we're building software at an incredible pace. We have an incredibly talented staff that in this industry is, is frankly kind of rare. I don't want to bash anybody else, but we have a tremendous amount of talent and the software improves because of people like Melissa and she's not the only one, but she's our, she is our largest customer, but we've got, we've got over 40 customers now of all sizes from a few units up to her. We try to give them all the exact same support. And if somebody makes a point that's valid, that affects the industry, we're going to fix it. And one of the, one of the issues that we see out there is uh, that I, as a, as a CEO concerned about how do we scale a company with support is how can we keep doing this? And, and the answer is you, you scale support with excellent software. Instead of having multiple workarounds for every process that you have to do, if the thing keeps getting broken for one or two or three, four people, you make the process work or you put a setting into where they can run the business the way they want. So we've dialed that in pretty nicely to integration. And now, so my point was, uh, I know I'm long winded and I apologize, but We've spent the last six months, what we feel like trying to get our software to a point where it's feature and benefit competitive with the leaders. And we feel like we're there. And with Document Center, I think we're putting them in our rearview mirror. And now, now the time is to look around the industry because nobody uses their software platform for every piece of their business. I think you can agree on that. Some people have a maintenance product that they use, property melt. Some people have inspection products that they have. People have different screening products, documents, DocuSign, whatever. There's 50 different softwares that can support the industry. And we're not naive enough to think that we can build all of that out to an exacting standard of somebody who wants to run an excellent business. Now, I do think with our talent that some of the products we build are significantly better than what's out there that are integrated within Rentvine. But if there's enough demand from our customer base to integrate with another product, we will absolutely do that. We've already done integrations with Tenant Turner, Rently, uh, Lead Simple, and we have done the vast majority of our feature building 
And the, the rest of the year and into next year is going to be a pretty heavy look at those integrations. And we, we know who they are. We got Second Nature and Property Meld and Z Inspector and a lot of these people that you guys use. You mentioned Pest Share. Um, it's, it's a matter of prioritizing those for our customers and getting them done. Now, we may still build a product that is a screening product or a maintenance product or something like that. And like I said, I have no illusions that it's going to be the best in the industry. So people might use it and it might work for them. If not, we'll integrate with what they need to integrate with to make their business work. Um, we feel like so, that's, we feel like that's the approach that needs to be taken in the industry. Go ahead. So I want to talk about the, the business development side, right? So um, we touched on this maybe a little bit in prior conversations, Melissa, maybe you can jump in and how you guys use this, but we do a lot of biz dev and we use the lead simple. And of course we could, you know, in the, in the market that we're in now, we could add one and lose one or add 20 and lose 20 in that same month, just because of the sales market is so hot right now. Okay. So the biz dev is a big part. We've always wanted to grow organically. You know, our biggest year we signed up 400 organically. And, you know, last year, I think we're this year, we're probably going to do about 200. I'm going to make a point here is talk to me about the integration with lead simple, property management agreement sign signings and then straight into your software and rent buying kind of talk me through that so as a you know business development person are they working on one platform or 10 platforms and how's this working for us? well you asked me a question that i'm not always the best to answer because it's it's it stuff um the way the integration worked and you know lead simple is a crm software but they've also been they've also made a lot of noise in the space with some workflow stuff and they we have a mutual customer that reached out to us and said can you guys start looking at an integration with lead simple and we were like okay is that like a crm integration and they said no it's more geared toward like the workflow stuff so their dev staff reached out to my dev staff they got together on what they needed to do. They figured it out. And I know that we have a pretty basic integration right now, but we're looking at a much more elegant integration as we go forward. And that's just our teams working together um, going forward. I don't know the specifics of the push pull and the data that's being exchanged, but it is meeting the customer's needs. And that's Matt Tringali with Home Fault. So if you know if you want to if you want to reach out to him on what the exact uh, nature of that integration is, that's though he's the person to talk to for the goals that we're trying to capture for that customer. But that's an example of a customer that reached out to us and said, I want this integration. Do you have time? And we said, yeah, let's make it happen. And that was ahead of our dev calendar for integrations. And we, and we did, we, we took care of that because we know that multiple follow on customers that I hope to land soon are going to ask for that exact same integration. And well, because that's, you know, we use that platform specifically for biz dev. I mean, the biz dev people, they probably never log into Appfolio unless they have to check something on a specific owner, but they spend 90% of their life on lead simple. And then once that agreement is signed, then what? Okay. Then somebody has got to upload it into the software and yeah, you know, Correct. The drill. that's, and that's where we can help pick up is the, the management agreement is already built. So when someone's ready to sign, you put their name in and their email and you click a button and everyone gets the management agreements signed. And then their portals open for business. They can upload any other documents that you want. That same thing happens on the leasing side too. You know, when, as soon as that lease is signed if, and you're ready, the portal's open. They can start funding their move-in charges, security deposits, anything they need to do. It's literally minutes, not days or hours or scanning back and forth. It's, oh, we approved him. Boom. Lease is in his inbox. Hey, they just signed it. Tenant signed. We're ready to go. So that's, that's, the, kind of, that's the kind of integration that we're looking forward to on something with, with, like with a lead simple is that you're able to track like, hey, here's the source where this lead was generated. The management agreement was signed. Here's how much money we're making on this advertising path that we're using, whether it's organic SEO or paid search or going to trade shows or advertising in the newspaper, whatever your source is, uh, it, allows you to, it allows you to track um, which, you know, what your, what your ROI is on that type of, of investment. Now, Melissa, uh, and then Dave, you may want to answer this as well. Uh, how did the implementation go? I mean, we talked a little bit about it, but are they going to parachute in and walk you through hand by hand? Are they scraping the data out of your software and putting it in there? Uh, in addition, what did you do with your old software? So kind of talk to me about the crossover process. Let me interrupt real quick before you go, Melissa. That's the number one objection we have, obviously. And unfortunately, competitors, uh, our competitors have made, has, hey, thanks for joining. 
good luck implementing. And then they, some of them have taken a, a step back. So we don't do that. We promise we won't do that. And then I'll let Melissa take it from there. And let her, <laughs> what you know, her, her actual experience was. Yeah. So we came from promise, um, which is dated, probably the most dated one out there. Um, and so in, we knew integration, um, we knew it was a step up. We knew it, it was going to be far more efficient. Um, we knew there was going to be some legwork in the beginning. And so it was a matter of, because we knew our old software, we ran the reports that were needed. Um, Rentvine provided the list of that stuff to basically get your company set up. So your owners, your account codes, your tenants, your um, vendors, you know, anything you need to have in your database. Um, the one benefit to us is that our database, we or our old software we own. So it wasn't on the cloud. It was on a server. We still have access to it. Um, and in fact, we still referenced it quite a bit, not because RentVine couldn't do the job. There are things that we want to organize differently going forward so we can be the most efficient. And so we knew that we would just reference that information because we couldn't do it all in our busiest time. Um, but let's get up and functioning. And then now our slow time projects will be to move over you know, property-specific information and things like that. But they provided the list of what they needed. We ran those reports. We, um, I'm not going to lie and say it, it doesn't take time. You have to commit the time that it takes. Uh, my entire management team, which is 10 of us, came in on a weekend and we sat here and drank mimosas and went through the report and everyone did their part. And it was a matter of transferring you know, some deposits and getting things ready so RentVine could do their thing as far as entering. Um, like I said, there's some things that I learned along the way, um, that I'm hopeful we have helped, uh, customers that have come after us do a little bit differently. Um, and we didn't know those things until we went live into action. Um, and so I have those written down for anyone who talks to me and I've also shared those with RentVine as well. Um, but once they got all of our data entered after we ran some reports, um, then we slowly started, um, working through some things. We tested a couple of things for about a, uh, about a month prior to going live. Um, and then we clicked the on button and we went, in fact, I was in, um, at the broker owner convention when we went live. So I wasn't even here. <laughs> That's correct. I remember <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, I kept looking over like, Oh, is everything okay? <laughs> I know, but I knew I was there with them if we needed help. Um, every time we've called, we've had a question. We've, it used to be, um, come through me or, or Jim, it's now gone. Really my team leads take charge and they're the ones that in their area specific reach out to who they need to, whether it's the, you know, the development team or whether it's just a simple support question. Um, if there's been a bug they've have fixed within the time they've promised. Um, and so I, I don't say this because I love rent buying and I think, you know, I think the world of Dave and John and Adrian on all those people. Um, but the customer support, single-handedly has been the number one reason that I would never regret making this choice. Like they have been there step-by-step step every single way. Um, I will mention again, I spoke to them daily probably for a month, um, but they cared. Um, I felt as if I was the only customer that they were dealing with and maybe that was true or not, but I wouldn't have known any different. Um, and they fixed the problem until we were satisfied. So looking back now, I mean, I'm 1300 doors. Like if I can do that, anyone with 200 can do it. It's all relative. Let's talk about the owner's perspective, the owner client. Okay. Because there is some pain involved a little bit for them, but let's mm -hmm. talk about this. They're getting a brand new owner's portal. There's yep. going to be some crossover of accounting information, Take those two things and talk about those for us and what their overall experience has been with us so far. Okay, so we communicated um, very early on that this was coming, it was gonna be a change. We've had a lot of owners for 20 plus years. So their technology in general is not easy for them. Um, we were excited about it, we hyped it up. And so that made the change easier. I will tell you through the process of owner statements, the first couple months, there was some feedback and I had several owners in my office wanting to come learn how to go through the new statement, even though it was pretty similar to what we had. Um, and then actually there were some very good suggestions that came from our owners on that owner statement process um, that RentVine implemented. There's a summary page now. There's some things we had to adjust on where it came in the statement that just made more sense. And that's us being um, property management experts. Rent, RentVine doesn't know that, right? They build software. 
So they need your input and they need to understand the why behind it. Um, and they have made adjustments. Our owners were super happy with the portal. Um, they're able to pay instantly if they owe money. Their documents are there. Um, I know our owner statement process has, um, the, the process itself has saved us a ton of time. It's super easy. Um, I'm trying to think what else you want me to touch on. Uh, did, did each one have to enter in their account information or is that able to be crossed over? Nope. So that was entered in, in our implementation process. And then I literally clicked a button that is said, invite all owners to their portal. They had to go in and set up their name and password because they, they create their password right in their portal. Um, and then it was live. The other thing is, is I have a lot of owners that have multiple properties. And so there's a way to connect all of the property, the portfolios um, into one login. And so I, one by one uh, with the help of Rentvine, got the directions and those owners that have that, I helped them set up that. So they log in one time, and maybe they have 10 different portfolios. Um, our base is built like that. So that was huge for us. They're like, I don't want to have to log in to 10 different things to see all my stuff. Um, so they didn't have to enter in. They literally had to set up their name and their password. Same with the tenants. When you enter it in, you hit invite all, they get their portal invite. It reminds them it expires after three days. And so it forces them to do it. Um, and it's a super easy process. So the tenants, you can do the automatic payments, kind of like, you know, standard stuff any longer. Yep. Very cool. Live, yeah. live portal. It is probably my favorite feature still to really? this. Day. Yep. Okay. Just because we didn't really have neat. it. So, I mean, yeah. rent track, we had rent track. They could pay online, but it was send a file. It was not integrated. I mean, this is live. So again, all of the fees that we're collecting as a PM are being paid because they can see um, our owners are paying in a quicker time that, oh, uh, everything about the live portal there. Well, Melissa, I'll interrupt you. You also, you're used to the manager ledger coming from promise, but a lot of other companies don't, they're not, a, they're not even familiar with the manager ledger concept. And that is just a, it's a huge differentiator from the competition. It just separates client money from manager money instantly and automatically. The second, all the charges are created, there's no fighting. One of the things we saw was fighting over owner statements. That's the big source of customer support for property managers. Get a statements, go out, phone starts ringing. So with the statement, um, and I won't be too boring, but you can create multiple custom owner statements with RentFine. There's not the statement that you have to send out that looks exactly the same for the guy with one condo as it does for the guy with three apartment buildings, eight, four plexes, and three commercial buildings. So that person might want a different look to his statement. And we've given the property manager the ability to do that. Yep. Super customizable. You can click it on and off. Um, you can add the tenant like a, basically like a rent roll on the statement and for multifamily, like that's huge. You know, our clients want to be able to see that move in and move out dates. Um, it's been, it's been really well received on our owner side. Um, everything is very clear. Um, there, you know, there was the transfer over of either the balance or the ledger from one to another. So that was one statement worth um it, in retained earnings is how we coded it um but other than that it's it's gone very smooth in fact i ran the payments this morning and our accounting staff already sent the statements out a, a 10 minute deal and thanks to melissa and jim we have a, we have an epic budgeting tool in rent fine now so wow i'm impressed i'm pretty excited gang so kind of showing up this conversation <laughs> we had a lot to touch on uh this is it's exciting to hear the first person account of how this went down for you. So Melissa, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, Dave, as always, you know, whatever, Dave. Uh, <laughs> I'll see Melissa, you soon, Brad. Yeah. I'll see you in a couple of weeks, all right. It was a, it was a pleasure <laughs> to have Melissa on today. Thank you <laughs> so much, Melissa, for being on the show. So wrapping this up again, appreciate you guys coming on. Look forward to seeing you at the next conference. Property hey, one last thing, Brad, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you oh, one I'm last thing. I'm trying to give my closeout if pitch. You wanna be, just... If you wanna be like Melissa and love your software, and rent vines ready for you. If you're, if you don't want to be abused by your software provider, we're ready to bring, we're ready to bring you on. Now go ahead, Brad. You can can, can I finish my, my yes, you may, this you may finish show. your thank podcast, you. your show. That's, that's you. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing everybody at the property manager mastermind conference in May of 2022 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Look forward to that. PMMCon.com. Go there to learn more and appreciate you guys being on the episode. Thanks again. And we'll see you soon. 
This show is sponsored by the best home inspection software on the market for property managers. We endorse and use Z Inspector as our software of choice for our team to document home inspections. We particularly like their 360 degrees camera system that produces amazing views of the interior room. Your clients will love Z Inspector documented inspections you provide them. Visit www.zinspector.com to learn more. This has been a podcast episode by propertymanagementproductions.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us feedback, and come back for our next episode.